author Matt Cox in here to uh, promote and talk about his uh, new book, It's Insanity. There he is, a.k.a. the Joker. Give him the Joker face. <laughs> if he doesn't look like Joker, I don't know who does. So I read the book. Uh, my friends have read the book. It's, it's really a great book. So first, who is Frank Amadeo? Who, who, who read the book? Ryan read the book. Who was in here? Oh, yeah. What happened to him? I thought he was going to come by. We, we've had enough with Gary's enough for one trip. All right. That's fine. So, oh, Frank Amadeo. So, look, where's my. It's close. Okay. So, Frank Amadeo is a. Frank Amadeo is a. He's. He. What was the question? Who is Frank Amadeo? Frank Amadeo and is. And who is he to you? There you go. Okay. So, I was incarcerated in prison. Uh, at the Coleman Complex, uh, which is about a mile north of Tam uh, of Tampa, so in Florida. So Frank Amadeo, when I got there, well, after a few, I'd been there a few years. Frank Amadeo showed up uh, as a, he had been sentenced to twenty two and a half years, and he had pulled off the at the time I believe it, it may still be the largest. It was the I believe at that time, and may still be the largest um, payroll tax uh, scam in in history. It was at that point they were saying it was over two hundred million dollars. He had basically stolen two hundred million dollars from the federal government. Uh, although at that that's what it ultimately became. He'd already been sentenced. He ended up it's one hundred eighty one million is what he owes. I think later they realized it was over two hundred. So it's a hard thing to actually put your finger on. So yeah, uh, he showed up. He was also a disbarred lawyer. So he showed up and I met him in federal prison and he was doing legal work for everybody. And he ended up doing a bunch of legal work for me and helping fight my case. Brilliant guy, got 12 years knocked off my sentence. Amazing guy. Um, but during the course of him doing my legal work, I kept hearing bits and pieces of his story. You know, guys are joking about him. You know, well, they're not joking. Look, some guys are just, you know, in awe of him. Like they, he's, he's, this is a lawyer, disbarred lawyer, but he's a, he is an educated lawyer who was once a, a member of the bar fighting guys cases for nothing. In my case, he actually paid for the, my motions to be uh, typed up and the stamps to mail the shit because I had no money at that time. Um, he's just a great guy. So, and he's helping people and he's a little odd. Right. So you, you end up in prison with him. You find out that he does lawyer work. You talk to people about him. You meet him. He ends up uh, putting in paperwork for you to get you time off of right. your sentence. So that's how you initially meet him. Then you hear some stories. As an author, you start to get a little bit more interested well, yeah, in him. Yeah, I'd been and... hearing, like, guys are kind of joking about him. They're like, yeah, bro, fucking, you know that guy? He thinks he's going to take over the fucking world. Like, he's fucking, he's <laughs> mental. I mean, he's yelling at shit. He's yelling at people sometimes. And, and when he's... you read the book and you see that, like, you, at first you're like, is this real? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's insane. Like, I mean, what's so great is he's one of these guys you could have a conversation with him. And you're like, just total brilliant guy. And then... Maybe a week later, something happens, and he's like, "Well, when I take over the world, I'm gonna. The first thing I'm gonna do is." And he starts talking, and you're like, <laughs> "When you <laughs> did you say when you take over the world?" Now, the first time he said that to you, um, oh. no, he, actually, the first time, the first time I heard it, he just was talking in general, and he said it was me and another guy who was who were there. He, the guy, brought me to him. I already heard it. I heard people talking. Yeah, I had met it, but I mean, the first time you heard it from him. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 jarring because right. he's so serious. And did you, he's so did you smart. take him seriously the first time, or were you? Oh, no, he, like, we're talking about my legal work. Yeah, we're going over my legal work, and he's saying I'm going to take. And he over goes off on a little tangent <laughs> about his about when his legions, like who talks like. First of all, if you say I'm going to take over the world, he's saying I'm going to be emperor. Who says emperor? That's a pretty strong word. Yeah, that's that's an, it, yeah. It, it's you know it's not like saying I'm going to be ruler. I'm going to be whatever. He's saying emperor. So one. He's going to be emperor of the world. And two, he says like legions. He doesn't say like when my troops or my, he's like, when my legions march on Washington. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? He said it like that? Oh, yeah. Listen, I've been at a table before. It's so bizarre. See, I, we're getting off a little off topic, but I mean, let me give you an example. I'll give you an example real quick and we can always jump back. You can cut it. Away yeah, go ahead. So he's working on his legal work. So you put up with a lot from a guy who's really helping you for nothing. 
and he's brilliant. And you've wa- also, I've watched him walk guys, file paperwork, and walk them out the door. Like, I've seen him cut guys' sentences in half. I've seen him, do you see what I'm saying? He's doing amazing things. So, one, so in other words, you've seen what he could do. So you're like, look, if i got to put up with a little bit of that nutty shit, absolutely. whatever, i got no problem. He's doing it for free. I had 26 fucking and he, years. And as you're in there, you're seeing guys walk out from the work that he did. I'm Left and right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like if every two weeks you see somebody get 10 years knocked off or somebody walks out of the prison or somebody go, some guy says, you know, Frank, you know, yeah, Frank got five years knocked off my sentence. We were hoping for 10. It's like, you just got five, five years, years knocked off your own sentence. That's an unheard of. And at this time, you have 25 years 20, to do. Yeah, 26, yeah. So you're 26. willing to put up with anything. Right. So so he, one day we're all sitting around the table. And I also hung out with the guys that hung out with him. Yeah. Like everybody, these guys, the smart guys in prison tend to gravitate towards legal work. So I don't do legal work. I read a lot of legal work. I was writing at the time. I was writing my other, the other inmates' stories because it gave me purpose. It gave me something to do, right? So you get to prison, and I didn't have a wife and kids on the street, so I didn't have anything really to – like I'm in prison, and I don't really have a life out there in the street, and that's the worst for most people. But I'm in there, and the worst thing for me incar- being incarcerated was I wasn't achieving anything. I wasn't accomplishing anything. I felt like I'm just waiting here to die, and that sucks. You wake up every day depressed. It's horrible. But then I started writing my story and my fellow inmate stories, and it started giving me a purpose. So regardless, I'm hanging out with guys that hang out with Frank, and Frank's doing my legal work and stuff. But So I've literally – so the example is this. One day we're sitting at the table, this little concrete table. I'm sitting there, my buddy Pete, a guy named Donovan, and Frank, and they're all kind of talking about legal work, and I'm listening. I'm like, right, right. So I'm listening, and all of a sudden, somebody says, yeah, well, they did this. And, you know, well, look, no, Frank, they did this right here, and this is what happened with this guy. And Frank goes, That's, I'm, I'm not going to stand for that. That's ridiculous. He goes, and then he, he went into the whole, whole when, my, when my legions march on Washington, the president will bow at my feet, and I will burn the Constitution. Now, did, did he and, say with that enthusiastic? Oh, no, no. I can't even say it how enthusiastic. I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean but I'm saying like I don't he was yell. Re- yeah, but he was like really that no, enthusiastic he's red in the, about red in the it. the face, spittle really? flying out of his mouth, wow. furious, screaming. I don't want to scream it like this. Yeah. He, and he's like, <laughs> and he sat there. Nobody said a fucking thing. We all just sat there glancing at each other. And all of a sudden he goes, because you're waiting for him. He's bipolar. Right. So he's like, he calms down. He goes, Okay, we need to file a Johnson claim. I'm going to need a 2255, talk to Marty uh, in B3, and tell him, and, and you, everybody's like, okay, all right, Frank, all right, I'll get that for you. Okay, 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 no problem. Okay, and talk to so-and-so, and uh, I'm going to need research on this case, on, on, on Johnson versus the United States, and such and such and such, and you're like, okay, okay. okay. So what, did he have like a team of people that oh, worked yeah, that, for him in prison? Team. Oh, yeah, had a whole team. <laughs> had a whole, he was running a, I, we used to say he's running a small law firm, but as the years In went, prison. In prison, and he, he like clerks and shit. As the as the <laughs> years went, yeah, it was a more like a medium sized law firm. I don't mean it was, it was like I was not like him and three guys. Yeah, it was at the point where it was him, and he had five full time typists. He's got six guys doing six or seven guys drug dealers doing research. He's got um, sex offenders typing stuff up. He's got he's got everybody broken up doing different things. Now, if you're in there and you want to get to him, do you need like a referral to get to oh, him? Oh, you're not walking up to him. You're not walking up and you're, saying. You're going through channels to get to him. He had, he literally had like, um, I don't know what day it was, but it was like Spanish Tuesday. Yeah. Like all the Spanish it's guys like, show, and he had interpreters. He actually had like Spanish Tuesday. He has like Spanish. And it was like, only Spanish people that could go. Well, because that's, I, that's the day I had my, he had two interpreters. Yeah. And they would line up with their legal work. So you got four or five guys, sometimes it's 10, lined up with their legal work, holding their legal work. In a little line, and then he would talk to somebody, and they, they'd interpret, and I'd get me this, get me this. I'm going to need the transcripts. Okay, what's this? What's that? He'd look over the paperwork. He'd go, okay, all right, um, give me this. All right, fine. Okay, we'll talk next to you know next Tuesday. The guy leaves, and he go, okay, next. And then this, and he would have actually guys like there was this drug dealer who was a Jamaican drug dealer, massive guy. Anyway, he would stand there, and he'd be like, he'd be like, he'd look over, he go, yeah, uh, Juan, okay, you're next. I mean. <laughs> It was insane. It was bizarre. And we're sitting at the next table. We're doing our stuff. And, you know, we realize how comical this is. But but he's walking people out the door. So they would come in, and he'd go through as many as he could, and he'd write them up. And then he would assign – he'd write up little sheets he'd write up, and he'd give this assignment to you. Okay, you need to research these five cases. And this is a guy who who could also memorize. Like he could tell you, okay, well, 
this is a, a bill versus uh, you know bill versus the state of Indiana. You need to look that up. Look this case up. Look this. And he said sometimes a lot of times he he tell you you know it's circuit such and such. I mean he would just so he had he had a photographic memory. Yeah, I, it's called a, um it's basically photographic. They, there's another name for it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's in like simpler terms. Yeah, simpler terms as photographic. Memory. So how many years were you with him in there? Say six years, six. Six, six or seven years, and and like of the cases he took, what percentage would you say that he got some type of win? Seven or eight years, bro. Oh man, it's fucking. Hard. I can't believe it. it was about six or seven years. That you were with bro. him, man. I hate that you even just told me that. I didn't realize it was that long. I didn't talk to him for the first two years. Yeah, because I I didn't want this crazy guy doing my legal work. But everybody I talked to on the street, and you're seeing people walk out. Well, yeah, and the lawyers on the street are telling me. That, that the lawyers on the street are telling me, you're done. You yeah. don't have a – when you're a lawyer, when you're a public defender, you call her up and you're talking to her and she starts crying on the phone, you got a problem. Yeah. So finally my buddy said, you have to talk to Frank. I'm like, the fucking guy that thinks he's going to take over the world? Are you out of your mind? He, they're like, yeah, you know, you know Tom, uh, Tommy so-and-so? And I'm like, right? He's like, just got fucking 10 years knocked off his sentence. I'm like, what? And you start hearing this more and more oh, and more. I've been so hearing now- it. Well, okay, so now you're hearing it more and more, and then finally you're like, okay, well, what, choice do I what, have? what do I have to lose? What, yeah, exactly. I'm done. Right. So what I got to deal with some guy saying he's going to take over the world. Go well, in. his percentage is sounding pretty good from what you're saying right now of, of whether he gets a year off, five years, ten years, or walks the guy out the door. Yeah. Now, I read some of the documents, and that will be um, our second part where we go through right. all the documents you have because you have a ton. Um, did, did, they, did they have him medicated in, in prison? No, because he convinced them to take him off the medication. That's wow. part of this whole thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking gonna... that because to to see how like did right. he act? Was it my my basically reason for asking that was because I looked through the documents, and I was thinking was which we'll get to was he that medicated knocking shit out of the park? That's why. No, he wasn't. No, he had to convince him to take him off the psychotropic. Uh, psychotropic is that the word? Psychotropic. Yeah, so, Me- psychotropic. Psychotropic yeah. medication okay. because it. it kills your creativity it kills your ability to think it, yeah, it, it just it dumbs slows you. dumbs you that he's yeah. drooling out of the side of his you, mouth you turn into a zombie so now um, you said i wanted to ask you before you go on he got 22 and a half years mm-hmm. right do you think he deserved all 22 and a half no he, it was overkill overkill i don't think he deserved I, I don't think he had the ability to form the uh the intent to commit the crime okay um i don't he look he he Look, let, let's say, look. The, the thing is, this whole thing with him being in prison, that's not even the story. I mean, you know that. Right, like, right. I'm, story I'm just building a, up to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I understand. I'm just saying, like, if someone's watching, like, that's not even the amazing part. Right. right. That's. But this is this is amazing, too. If, if that was the. If him just going to prison and knocking these things out left and right, um, that, that in and of itself is an amazing story. That ain't even it. Right. That's minor in comparison to the real story. Of what really happened and how he ended up in prison, but yeah, he uh, um, did he? No, I think he probably should have been sent to some kind of asylum. Maybe if he was guilty at all, he should have gotten four or five years. If Not you twenty two and a half. If you could say he was guilty, which of course the. Um, there's a strong argument that could be made that you know he's not even guilty. He wasn't able to form the uh, requisite. Uh, intent or requisite intent or something, whatever. Mm-hmm. He wasn't able to conceive of the fact that what he was doing was breaking the law, and that's the point. And he really, honestly, it's just it's it's his mental illness. So, so l- let me say one thing real quick that I don't think we've clarified. Frank is a ra- it's a he's an access one rapid cycling bipolar with features of schizophrenia. So he's he's constantly kind of up down up down up down constantly. But ultimately, at some point, every few months or six months or a year, he'll crash for a few days, just like like can't get out of bed. But when he's manic, so during this cycle, when he's manic, he has delu- he has schizophrenic delusions or ho- almost in- possibly hallucinations where he believes that God is telling him that he is going to be the emperor of the world. That his destiny is to conquer the world and rule the, pl- the the rule the world. Now, 
he has had this this fixed delusion since he was uh, in his early teens. I was 12, just going to ask you that. Do you think he was he had that his entire life or born with it, or do you think he just developed it over time? Some tragedy happened in his life. No, or... it, it's it's been since he he was a, a it's been since he was a kid. I mean, his sister says it. His wife has said it because, only because she knows the his family history. Um, and the the doctors that have that have interviewed him and uh, diagnosed him have said that he's had it his entire well, it, you know since he was in his early teens since his since middle school. which maybe he even had it prior it just didn't really have. fully come out right now he, in his mind he's told me that he's always known but the earliest proof that I can see where people have said it and it, it was documented that this is what was since he was in his since he was basically 12, 13 years old. But he might have tried to hold it in. Yeah. So well, I, I, mean, I, I would go even, with you. He was, he was probably it. all like that. He's yeah. saying he's always basically said it. Maybe I, it didn't manifest. Maybe he didn't even know what it meant. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And what what president was in when when he was on this kick to take over world domination? I mean, it was it was it was a uh, Bush. George, George W. Bush, and then was that uh, was Clinton when he was doing this too? No, well, uh, Clinton had Clinton had been president, but Clinton uh, Clinton asked him to join his uh, his charity, but that was after Clinton uh, was no longer president. Okay, he then started a charity, and you have all these people come and be board members, and of course they donate and they raise money, and they tell you what you know they help run your charity for you and so he'd actually been asked to be a part of bill clinton's charity there's tons of politicians so so basically when he was going on his mission for world domination it was under the bush administration yeah absolutely (laughs) absolutely (laughs) uh what caused the feds to look into frank like what caused them to look into frank initially what happened that they they started to look into him because he's running this shit He's getting close to Bush, Clinton, all these people. Well, what what was the the, the ticker that got them to start looking into him? Longer of an explanation, only because the the way it happens is after Frank graduates law school, mm-hmm. and he was approached by the CIA to come work for the CIA, which which is big, a big thing. Um, the the CIA approaches a lot of lawyers uh, in law school. And so they came to uh, Emory and they gave a bunch of lawyers a guy like you could basically go and take the test. He took the test. They came back and they said, hey, we want you to come. We're offering a job. He graduates law school. He doesn't go uh, and he doesn't take the job because his father gets sick. He gets throat cancer. And so he goes to take care of his father and the, and the family never becomes a uh, uh, never becomes goes to this work for the CIA. What what he does do is ultimately he ends up becoming a bankruptcy lawyer. In the course of that bankrupt being a bankruptcy lawyer, his tendency is to take on more responsibility than he can. He thinks he can juggle all these things. He turns this little law firm or the little bankruptcy law firm into a mill. Like if suddenly they they go from a hundred and some odd bankruptcies to you know bringing in thousands. And what happens is he ends up ha- crashing. He's juggling all these things. He's trying to keep everything together. He ends up crashing, and he, he's hospitalized for a week or so. In the meantime, his partners can't keep up with everything. So even after he left the hospital, he goes home. He stays home for weeks. They think something's wrong. They think he's got pneumonia. They think they don't know what's wrong with him. Nobody is thinking. This is back in the 80s, so nobody's thinking. Mental, right? They're not thinking depression. Right. They're thinking like, something it, physical. 80s or 90, early yeah. 90s. They're, thinking, they're not thinking that depression could be connected to something physical. And he doesn't realize he's depressed. He's he doesn't so, even realize it. Well, no, because no. it's so bad. Yeah. He's just like, I just feel so like – he's saying, I feel so bad. I, I'm achy. I hurt. I can't get out of bed. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. He's lethargic. He doesn't understand it's all mental. It's a mental. It's your mental condition is how you is making you feel that way. So, in the meantime, the the entire his the office collapses. Nobody can fill his shoes. There's all these bankruptcy complaints being filed, and there's charges placed against him and his and his two uh, that the, the other two lawyers, and he ends up getting uh, disbarred. Gets, and, and this happens when he's home with depression that he didn't even realize he had right and because they couldn't handle it things crumble now comes in 
and then that's what happened. Well, it, it, yes. I mean, so he gets disbarred. Yeah. He then ends up, what happens, do you know who Nancy Grace is? With CNN? Oh, no, uh, CNN, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nancy Grace. I would never want her after me, boy. Uh, she investigates him. So <laughs> really? she's, yeah, she, she was, investigated She him? was in Orlando. She's tough. Can you imagine her? Oh, she's, oh, can you imagine what a fucking horrible person she is? Um, I, I imagine dating her. So she, <sighs> She ends up investigating him. Better go she, on with a thirty pack. With they, he said, they put together two or three, um, two or three um, uh, grand juries and couldn't get him indicted. Like they wouldn't indict him. So she then hands it over to the feds. Of course, the feds will indict fucking. They come in, they indict him, they indict him. He ends up going to prison because they say what you did. He commingled funds. He lost client funds. You stole money from this person. You stole money from that person. This person lost money. Like if you lose money. You and I put you put money in the fund, and you lose money. You stole that money. I didn't steal that money. That money went to pay electric. It went to this. It went to my partners. It went to pay staff. It, you stole. You know how they do it. They twist and turn. They twist everything. it. So yeah. he ends up going. I through. read it all. Yeah, I, I've read so yeah. many cases. You know, with the guys I've had in. Yeah. And you know they'll come in, and they have like pretty much, you know, from their lawyer side of what happened, and then the feds take it, and then you get like I've read the discoveries of them, and it's like, not. What, not how it went, but they twist it and turn it with these big words and this bullshit, yeah. and then they make it into this whole thing, and then boom, you're dead. Yeah, and absolutely. then and then the feds take it like you said, and then forget yeah. it. And if you're si- if you're sitting in that defense chair, the jury already thinks you're guilty. Yeah. So anyway, he ends up taking a plea though. He doesn't go to trial or anything. He just takes a plea, and he ends up going to uh, goes to prison for like a year and a half, gets out, broke, disbarred. In Orlando, and ends up getting um, just so happens that a, one of the businesses. Now he says one thing. This other guy, Yaniv, says something else. His business partner. He had opened a small business or a little business venture on the side with this with this guy, and he ends up meeting him afterwards. And he goes in. And the guy comes to him and says, uh, "Listen, Frank said. Frank says the guy showed up and said, look, you know, the business I sold all the stuff. I did this. Here's the sixty thousand dollars. This is your money.'" I think it was 60. So he gives him the money. That's what Frank says. I talked to Yaniv. When I interviewed Yaniv, Yaniv said, I, yeah, I gave him I gave him the money. He goes, but it wasn't for the business. And I go, why? He goes, I felt bad for him. I didn't owe him any money. He said, no, we, we it wasn't that. He goes, I just gave him the money. Yeah. He, he, goes, he goes, I guess he sees it different. Like, you know, people have a different point of view. First, yeah. Right. So, I mean, like, literally, that's one of the very few. There's almost no... When this guy's telling me his story in prison, I ultimately start writing a story because I've heard so many different things that I thought, I, I got to write this guy's story. Yeah. I always kind of assume, because it's so insane, when I got out of prison and I, I figured I'm going to take, I had a synopsis, like a 20-page 20, 20 synopsis. I always thought to myself, when I get out, I'm going to turn the synopsis into a full-length book, which was right here, and it's amazing. So I think I think that's going to turn into a movie. I think somebody's it's, going to pick it oh, up listen, because, it, because it's just it's too crazy. I, I've already been, and it's real. I've already been to L.A. and I've pitched it to two different um, producers. Anyway, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you told oh, yeah, me. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I I think it's going to happen. Oh, it's 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 yeah. It, everybody loves it. You've never heard anything like this because you haven't even heard it. No, so, no, no. So now what, I want to ask you something, and it kind of goes back just out of curiosity. On his first sentence, did they put him in a camp or a Oh, he went, to a, he went to what's called a shock boot camp. They don't have what them anymore. What the hell is it's that? It's basically, it's like your, it's like almost like the military boot camp. You okay. have to run and jog. You're up at fucking five o'clock in the morning. That's where they you're put doing, him? Yeah. The he was hell? young then. He's not, uh, he wasn't an old man then. He was in his thirties. He could. The Fed, well, so the feds used to have Used that. to have it. Because so the state like, has it now still. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the feds would do it. Like they might give you like two years and they'd be like, look, if you pass this program, you know, then we'll wow. try, knock six months off your sentence or whatever it was. Wow. And that's basically what happened. So he got out. He's on probation. So the guy gives him 60 grand. And this is what I was saying. Like when I got, I always thought to myself, I'm going to write the story. And when I get out, I'll turn it into a book because it's so amazing. But here's what deep down, this is how I felt. How I felt was there were so many just insane things that I'd heard that I always assumed when I got out and started interviewing the guys that he told me about that the story would unravel and it wouldn't be the story he had told me. You understand? Like he says, oh yeah, this is what happened. And then I talk to you and then I'm like, oh, okay. And I go and I talk to you and suddenly I find out he, bullshit. That's mm-hmm. not what happened at all. This guy said this and the, this, the, the problem is one of the only inconsistencies I've ever, I ever found in his story 
was when Yaniv says, yeah, I did give him 60, but it wasn't for this. It was just because I felt bad for him. That's it. Like that's literally, if you read the whole book, because I and I'm very specific, I say, that's not, Frank says this, Yaniv, when I interviewed him, he said this. That's literally like one of the only inconsistencies. The guy's trying to buy F-15s and F-16s, and I'm, when I went in and interviewed that guy, two different people on that, I'm waiting for them to say, no, no, it's just a photo op. That wasn't really, that's not what happened. The pictures you saw, all this, all the documents, that's not what happened. You know what they say? Yeah, I know. It's, I know he was trying to buy these fucking planes and I, I told him not to buy the, I told him and I'm going, what? That's true? And they're like, yeah, no, 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 yeah. So what happened? He was trying to buy these planes. You know what I mean? He's trying to take over the world. He's building this fucking military. He's got these guys in. I'm going, that's insane. So anyway, back, so scratch that. So the point is he gets some money and he, he basically parlays that into, I'm skating over a bunch of stuff. He parlays that into, he starts, he starts representing companies as a, as kind of doing, um, you know, he has a vast experience in bankruptcy, right? bankruptcy law he's not a lawyer so he goes into companies that are failing and he starts um doing being he's a he called himself a turnaround expert or something but basically he's a venture capitalist so he goes in your company's failing he comes in and says here's what we're going to do and he designs a whole system of how he's going to save the company and then he implements the system and he turns the company around and for that, he gets a piece of the company plus you own $2 million or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, you could do it. You don't need a license or anything. Yeah. He's doing it. And that's what he started. So that little bit of money kind of helped springboard him into this. And and this was what was amazing. I talked to this guy. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, guy's name is uh, uh, Woody Johnson, actually. So sure. they call him Woody. His real, real name's not Woody. Imagine, some... imagine that name in high yeah. school. Right. So Woody. Johnson. Woody, what's funny about it? Woody is he was like, and this is the thing, Frank, the whole time, he's not hiding the fact that his ultimate goal is to take over the world. He's not hiding that. He's actively telling people that. He's like, look, I'm a megalomaniac. I'm, uh, I've got a bipolar condition. Uh, I have features of schizophrenia. He, he's like, he's, you know, he's like, that's that. You know, I, I want you to know that up front. I'm a disbarred attorney. Like he tells everybody. In other words, he has no shame in, in no. his belief. And, and and he says, and ultimately, I'm going to build a massive company, and I'm going to, through economic uh, domination and, and military might, I'm going to take over the world. Are you ready? To, uh, so uh, does that you have an issue with that? And they'd be like, are you serious? He'd be like, absolutely. Yeah. And they would go, no, nah, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, like, yeah. you're going to pay me $200,000 a year to work for you? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Like, they're like, what's the big deal? Yeah. He's kind, they kind of, like, think it's a joke. But- and Woody told me, and so did Yaniv, they go, they said, you know, you did kind of think it was a joke at first, but as you, as the weeks and months went on and it kept coming up and it come up, came up at meetings and you saw it and you heard it and you talked to other guys and you start saying, do you think he's, he's serious about this? And they're like, oh no, he's dead serious. No, he is. And that's ultimately like, that's his, his goal. That's crazy. And then he's like, they go, yeah, it's, it's nuts, it's nuts. But, and I, and I told, when I was talking to Woody, I said, but you're working for him. And he goes, I know it sounds crazy. He goes, but you have to understand, he, he was winning. He was, he was turning companies yeah, around. Yeah, he, he was winning everything. He's like, he's going in and he's going to the IRS. Like, you might owe $2 million to the IRS and um, $3 million, you know, your company. And you owe two million to the IRS in back taxes for something. You owe another so much for in, in this. You owe these cre six creditors six million. You owe these guys a million. And he comes in, and he would negotiate with everybody, and he would get them all to take less money, payment plans, and defer the payments for six months. He has nobody else could do that. Or he would say, "Look, it's not working out. I'm going to place it in bankruptcy." We're going to liquidate the company. We're going to. He goes, and then he'd scale the whole thing out, and everybody barely gets any money at all. He said, or you take this. This is what you take. That's it. He goes, and he charged money for it. Like, and I'm getting $2 million. They'd be like, oh, you're not. Well, then it'll go into bankruptcy. And when it goes into bankruptcy, because he was like a, what's called a, it's, I think it's called a primary investor, and he was first before everybody else. He's like, and I'm going to get all my money back. Would you agree with this, that he's a great closer? 
and not afraid to walk away. No, he, of course he's amazing. He's ama- you have to be. You have to look. Yeah, you know, right. you have to be able to walk away. Yeah, right, right. And so he, he would that. walk away, and then they would come back and say, "Hey, Frank, uh, maybe or maybe they wouldn't." But he, but he didn't have any fear of walking away. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if it goes into yeah. bankruptcy. I get my money back. If it go- and here's what he did. Here's what the brilliant part. So about. it was like a no no lose situation for him, really, right. right? Well, here's the brilliant part. You understand bankruptcies take a long time. Yeah, turnarounds take a long time. This isn't something that happens in two months. And then there's what? There's chapter 11 and 13, right? Right. right. There's and different There's different chapters. Of do, you course, know, do you know, are you educated in that? Not really. Chapter 11, I believe. There's only I'm, so many years and then you're kind of okay. There's like one where- but you're thinking kind of like like where you, you liquidate, like a person liquidates their, takes bankruptcy and they liquidate like a chapter 13. Okay. You liquidate everything. And then after like seven years, it falls off your credit or something. Yeah, or yeah. It doesn't really affect you. But that's not what he's, well, it's- with the company, it doesn't work like that because some companies completely liquidated and it's over. Okay. okay. There's no waiting seven years because the company's yeah. gone. It's done and over. With. It's over. Yeah. So he's going like, hey, I'm going to put it in a chapter 11. Yeah. And you know, or we're going to re, we're going to reorganize. Or he might say chapter, chapter, you know, he might say chapter 13 and we'll just wipe it out completely and I'll walk away with my check. Mm-hmm. So what he would do though is this: the brilliant thing he did was, do you know what a PEO is? I don't. Okay. Basically, it's like employee leasing. Okay. So explain that to me. Well, I mean, so so let's say you own a warehouse and you've got 100 employees. Mm-hmm. You've got a payroll department. You, you're paying them. It's probably you and you got some guy who handles payroll. And you're, you're making all your payments. Um, well, a PEO will come in and they'll say, look, all of your employees are going to work for us for this PEO. Let's say call it a Sunshine State PEO. So you're going to work. Your employees are now our employees and we're going to lease them to us. So you're going to pay us the money you're paying them. 20 bucks an hour, pay, you're going to pay us $20 an hour for every one of them, and we're going to pay them. Now, you would say, as o- the owner of the warehouse, why would I do that? One, we're going to handle all the taxes. We're going to handle all the payroll. We're going to handle all the... You want me to shut this off? Yeah. I did not, I did not realize it was even on. Nobody ever calls me. So he says, I'm going to... Okay. So... They say, we're going to handle all the taxes. We're going to handle all of the, we're going to handle everything for you. And what we're going to do is, but your employees are now going to be able to pay into our 401k. They're going to get a reduced insurance plan. They're go- not just because it's, they're ours, but we don't just, we, our leasing company doesn't just lease you. We got 20,000 other employees from 60 different companies. Yeah. So because we're so massive, we can get, your what you're paying for a workman's comp at this at this much ours is cheaper. Why? Because we have a massive amount of people. We can, you know, we can um, uh, we can negotiate better terms. We can. So you go, yeah, that's definitely worth it to me, and it's better for my employees. So what he no- Frank noticed right away was during these bankruptcies when I come into these warehouses and these companies and corporations, and I come in and I look at everything. The one thing that they all managed to do was pay their employees. Like they would stop paying their creditors and everybody else before you don't pay your employees. Right. So what he did was he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open a PEO. He goes and he like buys a PEO that's failing. Mm -hmm. And then the next company he goes in to help, he says, your 150 employees now are all going to be leased from this PEO. That's the first thing we're doing, which he owns. So at the very least, I'm going to reap the rewards of your employees. Smart move. Right. So everybody he helps. Is that legal? Is that all? Yeah, perfectly legal. So everybody he comes in, think about it. First thing we're going to do is this and this. And the next thing you know, so I've just taken all your employee costs and I've driven them down. Yeah. So I just helped you and I helped me. What a beast. And I'm going to make some money. And I'm going to take 20% of the company. I'm going to take, I need 20% of any of the money that I save you for, for, for the re- organization i'm going to he start. he's has a whole thing he lays it out and you either take it or you don't your company's going on going under anyway and so he turns these companies around so he starts turning these and that's what woody was saying he was doing things that were impossible he was negotiating with people that your p- typical people are in fear of for instance irs he's negotiating with the irs he's going right. in what well, that's one of the big things and, he did yeah one of his big and, things. and that's the toughest thing that's the, i mean they're right, that's sh- the fucking government so now, what was his well, when he when he finally did get indicted big time where you met him? What was his actual charge or charge is? Um, I believe it was like wire fraud. It was um, like hiding. I don't know what the final. Ch- I forget what the final charge was, 
but it, it started off as like money laundering, wire fraud, and uh, uh, withholding payroll taxes. Or no, I'm sorry, it's, it's some kind of like tax evasion and hiding money in like a bankruptcy. Like they hit them across the board. Yeah. But then it, it, in the end, you know what happens is they, they hit you with fucking 40 things and then you end up f- file, you end up pleading guilty to like one charge of bank fraud. Right. Or one charge of wire fraud. Well, what got him the 22 and a half? I mean, it okay. just seems like a shit ton. Right. Well, here's what happened. As he's growing, he, he had a, he has a, th- he had, he had a, a business model which he called Capital Genesis. Okay. He creates a company called Mirabilis. Mirabilis was the, you've seen, uh, you've seen James Bond. Yeah. Spectre mm-hmm. is, Spectre is this evil company that's run by ex former KGB and, and, you know, all, all these, all these spies, right? And the, its whole thing is to basically it's this criminal organization that is bent on taking over the world. And they create, you know, it's just this massive mafia type thing that's taking over, that's going to ultimately rule everything. And they have influence and they can make this guy president and get this guy elected and get that. So he ends up coming in and he starts Mirabilis. And Mirabilis is designed to implement Capital Genesis. And Mirabilis is designed basically to, like a cancer, just spread throughout the world. And he immediately starts buying up companies. Now, one of the arguments, or one of the arguments, one of the discussions I had with Frank was, I was like, well, you're buying up companies. He's like, right, we're buying them up. We're taking them over. You've got a company that's not doing well. We come in. They buy up the stock. They have a hostile takeover. Or you ask, you know, he takes over. And I said, well, so that's what your plan is for economic domination. He's like, yeah, economic domination. So he's buying these shit companies. Is he fixing them up? Some, some, some get fixed. Some, some go don't. bankrupt. Right. Okay. Um, but the plan, the the economic plan for capital genesis or Mirabilis is to kind of gobble up these companies and just grow and grow. And so here, here's here's the issue with that is that obviously some companies. Some companies, some governments are going to resist. Right. So he realized at some point there I may need to implement a military uh, s- s- situ- scenario. Yeah. And then this so, is and by the way, this is in the book, and this is where you like like this is where this is where he gets. This yeah. is where it's like, yeah, I want to build a big company. It's like, okay, yeah, and I'm also going to hire mercenaries to take over other countries. Yeah. As I was reading the book, you, you know, you get halfway. You're probably about halfway through, I would say, and you start, and your your mind's already blown because right. at first, when I first read it, now I knew it was true because I had talked to you, but I tried to read it from like a third party view, right? So I tried to read it with an open mind. So I sit there and I read it, and I think this this is fucking total bullshit. Right. There, there's no way this is true. Then you get about twenty five percent through the book, and it's well written, and it's not written. Um, Difficult not, to understand. Not overly complicated. Yeah. It's, it's an overly yeah. complicated now, now you issue. go into the paperwork on the next one. I mean, that shit's complicated. But the book is written where you don't need to, ha- you know, you can understand it. Right. So I would say this. 25% through, you're like, oh, fuck, this, this, is, this is real. Right. At first, you're like, this is bullshit. Yeah. And, and you question, is it fiction, nonfiction? What was thrown in there? But a quarter of the way in, you're like, holy fuck, this is real. Then you get to the halfway and he starts doing this shit. And it, yeah, when he it, starts making moves. He starts making moves and the military shit. And then you start to realize halfway through, maybe 60% through, and it's tough to put down. It's a great, well-written book, man. And I'm not just saying it because you're here because I tell you if yeah. it sucked. Yeah. Um, and then when he starts fucking with that military shit, then you're like, holy fuck. Yeah. All this shit he's doing, all of it, is to build his goal yeah. to take over the world. So all these businesses he's buying and fixing and this and that. The the whole purpose of that is simply to take over the world or whatever yeah. it, crazy it's, term to use. in the brain. Yeah. It's fucking Dr. Evil. It's, yeah. He's a, he, and I was say he is a James Bond villain. Yeah. But he's really a nice guy. But he's a James Bond villain. But, and, and then as you get into the book, here's the craziest thing. The guy's got a picture with Bush. Yeah. In the White House, right? Yeah, you know what I think I brought borrowed. I, I think I brought that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll talk about what you pulled up. Right. So this guy has a picture with uh, George W. Bush. This is okay, him with the planes. Look, put that put that up there. I, I'm gonna scan up. Yeah, yeah, up. you gotta scan. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like there's like like Yaniv is one of the guys that's in the cockpit of one of the plane. Like Yaniv is in the cockpit. Yeah. 
I'm doing the best I can because yeah. you, you, this it's just hilarious. blows your mind. It's hilarious. I mean, it will be up on the screen. So th this guy here is, he's literally in the White House, okay? He's with yeah, Bush George Bush, you know, and he's so smart, so intelligent, so on a mission. He got to that point where he's in the fucking White House yeah. with George Bush with the plan to take over the world. And it doesn't even end there. No, no. He, Clinton he, contacts him. Oh no! It's 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 all. I mean, listen. There's there's senators. There's mayors. I'm just saying the big names yeah, yeah. right now. Oh yeah, yeah. There's huge and, and what do you do with Clinton? Um, Keeping in mind, when, like as a person watching this, you, you, you who is going to buy the book? Keep in mind, this guy is on a plan to take over the fucking world, and he's used his intelligence and his IQ and his genius to get to the point where he's in the White House. He's with George Bush. He's well, with Clinton. Yeah, but you, you know, you know. One of the other thing I was gonna say, you know, in in the book, and I, I, I like, I don't, I don't, I barely even touch on this, because it's just there's so much other crazy stuff. You know that in Tampa there was Trump Towers. They were trying to build Trump Towers. It was like a two hundred million dollar or like one hundred sixty was it one hundred two hundred sixty million dollar project or two hundred million. It's a huge project. Yeah. So. Trump comes in and tries to get a hold of the project. Like he'd given their his name to the developer, and the developer was having problems, so he tried to come in and take over the project. And Amadeo comes in with Mirabilis and outbids Trump for the project. So Trump knows him. Oh yeah, Tr I've got a quote from Trump where Trump talks about Mirabilis. Trump says, "Obviously, I'm upset that I couldn't get control of the project. He is, but I'm confident that Mirabilis can pull it off." Fucking <laughs> Trump. Now he wasn't he wasn't president then. But, no, he was a builder at the time. Right, but which still. is even more. Yeah, he's, he's a monster builder. So, right, exactly. So anyway, so um, back I wanna, to I want to ask you though. I want to ask you because uh, I, I forget. We're getting all over. I'm, we're, oh, go ahead. You can yeah. Ask. Uh, Clinton. What what did he do with Clinton? Clinton just asked him to be on his uh, on his charity. Like Clinton, they wrote a letter. Um, uh, there was a couple letters and an emails exchange where he was trying to get Amadeo to be like one of the boards of directors of his chair of, of a charity that that Clinton runs called like the Global Initiative or something. Yeah. And there's all these big time guys, big CEOs that are a member of this charity and it's basically about changing the world and feeding you know, it's a charity. Yeah, I just wanted to touch that just yeah. because it, it's so interesting when you yeah, read the, it and letter. then to hear from the author. So like I, I know the track, but you know, to throw the fact in Clinton Bush and I, I know all the other guys. Yeah, yeah. It's just the big names. Trump, right? You know, it's like wow. I mean, if you don't buy the book, you're nuts. So right, and so I'm I, and, and I'm not. You know, I'm not pushing it to to, right. to blow you. You know, I'm, I'm pushing it because I mean, just think about it. This guy is looking to take over the world, and he made it that far. I mean, it's mind blowing. And the thing is, the whole thing is real. It's not bullshit. Right. So. So, okay, so back to how he got jammed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So he's buying up these companies, and he starts buying military-backed companies, or companies that are based in some kind of military application. For instance, he buys a company that makes portable satellites for the military. He buys a company that it removes asbestos from ships. He buys a company that he starts buying up um, – private security companies like you know how you have like Blackwater is like right. a huge one right and you have a, a is it Diacom or something I forget the name of it so there's these huge ones that have these private contracts in Afghanistan so Amadeo starts buying up smaller ones and in the book I consolidate he's got like three or four of them and I consolidate them I just call them I, I call them all tactical because he has tact one of them is called tactical investigative you know private military investigative service so it's long so I end up I, I just for simplica simplification I just say tactical the point is is he starts buying these up and he gets contracts in afghanistan so his guys are in afghanistan they're 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 guarding um they're guarding uh uh diplomats they're guarding shipments of food they're they're not really it's amazing you know they're not fighting you know they're not in the military guy there but they're you know they're they 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 contracted out to these guys so now he's picking and choosing these companies right and I, i'm asking this yeah. for a reason and he's picking and choosing these to basically have his groundwork to take over. Right. That's why he's going into the military. That's why he's going to Afghanistan, right? So, I mean, he he's getting all this. Well, he's laying he's laying out what he's he He's laying out the groundwork to get what he needs. So that's right. why he, he was, you know, going toward the military stuff to get all that, right? Right. That's one of the, I mean, obviously he needs money. I mean, you need a ton right. of money. Right, right. But one of the things but he's doing is. But this is all planned that nobody can see at the time. 
that's that's the whole thing is that you know you're saying that and that's what most people say but you understand he's not like the people around him know he's not hiding it he's mm-hmm. just low profile he's not advertising but he's not hiding it from he's got CPAs that work for him he's got lawyers he's got fucking four or five and they lawyers. all know he's what, he's, CPAs. what he's doing he's do they got, know what he's absolutely to do? okay remember I'm the reader you're the writer yeah so absolutely. I'm asking you as a reader right. and I in the book I have the interviews when yeah. I'm did you know this he's like they're like yeah we knew he didn't hide it yeah he's not not He's not like, you know, it's not like, hey, I'm going to tell you a secret. He's, he's not trying openly, to do it on the down low. He's open. He's open yeah. about it. So um, what happens is he gets all these things, and then he ends up – one of the things he did was he tried to buy uh, like a squadron of um, of uh, uh, used F-14, F-15s and F-16s. <laughs> he tried – he's negotiating with the Cypriots to place these planes in Cyprus. That's the thing where I said – I always thought it was – it was kind of bullshit. I was like, that's just kind of, I mean, I've seen the pictures and I and I've seen the documents, but I thought, yeah, that can't be possible. So when I actually interviewed a couple of the guys, I mentioned it. And all the guys that I mentioned were later like, yeah, he, he was trying to buy these planes. And he did. We, he's, and one of the guys is like, I actually went out there and sat in one of these. There's a pictures of me in one of the planes. He goes, yeah, they they flew in a couple of like F-22s or something because he was negotiating with this this private company that actually has buys these planes and they what they're called declaw they remove all the guts from them so they can't fire missiles or anything but what happens is you then move them to cyprus you hire russians the russians come and they put back all the stuff and now you've got active you got two dozen planes that as you have like a squadron of of (laughs) f-15s and of course you got two dozen f-15s what's that cost do you think uh it was about six it was a 60 million dollar uh yeah yeah i mean keep in mind a brand new f-15 might be 14, 15 so he million dropped dollars. 16, 60 million in F-15 planes. Right. Well, he, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't even buying them. I understand. I he, understand. But yeah, he's, he's literally actively doing, they're used. Yeah. So they might be 15 million brand new, but you know, when they're 25 years old, they're a couple million a piece. Yeah. So he's trying to buy like, like 25, I think 24, 25, a couple dozen, you know, you got it. Why buy one? How many does he You're end up with? You're gonna buy one. How many does he end up with with the F-16s? Huh? How many does he end up with with the of no, the he, F-16s? he doesn't get any. I just said he doesn't buy. He doesn't buy any of them. He's just negotiating to get them. Okay. He's nego this because this whole thing happens at once. Okay. He's negotiating to get these. He's first of all, if you bought them, where are you keeping them? He's he's got to keep. He's got to keep them in Cyprus. He's got the whole thing down. Now here's the interesting thing about this. While I'm looking into this, now that seems, whatever. While I'm doing this whole thing and I'm walking around and I'm t- thinking about how do you prove half this shit? Now, I've got the transcripts. You know, I, I've got the police reports and I've got, and I go over, we're going to go over that. Yeah, and, pick and, up that stack. Yeah. Oh, and this is, bro, this is, this the, is the, the, only. This is like a summary is, of what you got. Ha- yeah, yeah, this is just like, this is just the stuff. Yeah, you can see on the wide. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just the stuff that really, like, this is only half. Yeah. Like, I would need. Actually, I'd probably need a, a size, a, something about three times this size for all the documents to where I could go through piece by piece and show you every piece of the book. I just brought the stuff that's a, a little bit more like, that's crazy. I don't believe that, really, because I have the FBI report that says it. Oh, well, okay. Oh, well, that's crazy. Oh, really? Because I, I got the article that from the Associated Press. I've got the... I got the um, document. I got the transcripts that where the judge yeah, you says got this. Everything. I got the. So I only bought the crazy you, shit. And you did that because you know that when somebody reads this, they're going to say this is no, bullshit. No, they won't believe it. You but now, that. but now, you, when you got three thousand pages of shit, okay, disprove anything in there. Right. You I, have it all. I wouldn't believe this. Nobody you right would. Now I wouldn't. Believe Nobody this. would. And here's the thing: like all, like a lot of the documents are out there. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Is like but nobody takes the time to look it up. Well, here's the thing: like the 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 you know the Miami Herald did a piece here and the. Uh, uh, um, Orlando Sentinel did five or six pieces, and like there's little pieces here, and and they talk about how he wants to take over the world here, and they talk about bipolar here, and they a little bit, but nobody ever said, do you understand? This is what he did. Yeah. This is what happened. This is the insanity of it. Nobody put it together. Right name, right? It's insane. Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing, he's read the book. I mean, he, I mean, he's read the synopsis in prison. He loved it. <laughs> he loved it. He, I, what I love about him is his humility. Yeah. Most narcissists, megalomaniacs, they don't want you to say anything bad about them and make them look in, in, in no negativity, no negative light. They'll get furious. He doesn't mind. He knows how crazy it sounds. He goes, I know it sounds crazy. He's okay with that. So 
back to this whole thing, trying to buy the planes, trying to do this, was negotiating with a, a Russian company to take over a, a factory that was building. They were building airplanes at the time, but they used to build ICBMs mm-hmm. for the for the Soviets. So, I mean, he's not fucking around. So uh, negotiating with the Cypriots. So what happens at this time, uh, there's a guy named Kasha, uh, Kasha, Kasha, Kashasha mm-hmm. that comes in. And I've got, you saw the document. Yeah, you, yeah. Okay. Kashasha is a, he is a, a Congolese born citizen who came to the United States and was Harvard educated and became a doctor. Now there was independent or there was for the first time in decades, there was going to be uh, a, a democratic, a democratically elected president of the Congo, the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So they were holding elections. So Kashasha comes back and says, look, I want to run for president. This country's all messed up. And keep in mind, the Congo has the largest consolidation of mineral rights in the world. That's going to sound dumb to you, right? Right. Explain what a Congo is. Uh, the Congo? The Congo is, yeah. the Congo is, it's a, it's a country in Africa, basically mm-hmm. Central Africa. There's actually two, two Congos. So a lot of people will be like, you know, oh, the Congo. Well, there's actually two. So it was, one is the they call it the DRC, and one's just like the Congo. I forget what they call it. They actually has it's the Congo or it's Congo Republic or something. It's very small. And what's the DRC? DRC, D- Democratic Republic of the Congo. Okay. Which, which is where this guy Kashasha comes and he says, I want. I want to run for president. I don't have the money to run for president. So he ends up contacting Acme Strategy Corp, which mm-hmm. is one of the companies under the Mirabilis umbrella. And so, so obviously somebody comes to Frank and says, we got a guy. Here's what's happening. Now, by the way, the, when I mentioned the largest, it's the largest consolidation of uh, mineral rights in the Congo. So you would think, okay, great. So then they're rich. Well, no, they're not rich because you've got a hundred and some odd tribes fighting in the Congo, so and they they've been a, in a constant state of uh, of um, revolution for the last fifty years. So how do I go and mineral and 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 drill the rights and, and I'm sorry, drill the rights? How do I dig for these minerals? And and in in a country that's torn apart by war, I I, I mean. You can't hire. I can't hire this tribe because this tribe will kill them. They're jealous, and yeah, then this. They, and yeah, it's, right. just, it's just it's just a complete disaster. Right. So, what they do is, Frank says, "Look," he talks to Kashasha, and he says, "Look, here's what I'm going to do. I'll get you. I'm going to get you elected. You'll be elected, and you're going to implement capital genesis in that country." And explain capital genesis. Capital genesis is where you're. This one company gives favorable. Con- so, if I own this company. It, my company gives favorable contracts to other companies, right? Okay. And you then, in turn, give com- give favorable con- contracts to me, and you're all under the same umbrella. So you don't, instead of having this competition, you all work together for. It's, you know what it is? It's fascism. It's a corporate. Okay, so fascism. simply put, so you're Matt Cox Company. Okay, you give me MSES Media a favorable favorable contract right. deal. Now I go and I'm dealing with other people and I give them favorable deals. Right, and then they give you favorable deals. And then and they give me favorable because deals. Because we all basically yeah. everybody's working together. Everybody's ships are headed in the same direction. Gotcha. It's, it's it's essentially it's corporate fascism. Okay. So we're all we all have the same goal. We're all working together and we're not going to compete against one another. And oh, what happens is hell of a fucking strategy, man. A, as a wow. result, you buy up the other con- companies that are weaker or don't agree with the strategy and you take those over and you you incorporate incorporate them. And here so here's the thing. While I mean, that's I'm, pretty much a takeover right there. Right. Yeah. So so that's it's more complicated than just that, right. but yeah, it's yeah. that's the simplest form. So the the thing interesting thing about this is like while I was researching the book it was like how do you know this is true? How do you prove this? Some stuff it's like, well this is what Frank said he was doing and why he was doing. Some things it's just Frank telling me this guy told me this, and this happened, and I had a meeting here, and this happened, and some of it just sounds bizarre. Mm-hmm. So what I did was when I got out of prison, I tracked down a CIA, a former CIA agent, 
and had him read the book. Now, how the hell do you track down a formal CIA agent? I did a, a podcast. Matt that, Cox, the con man, he tracks yeah. down a CIA agent. I, what I happened, it, it, it I was I know just, that's not the first time you've done it, yeah, but. It was uh, a fluke. It was really a fluke because I'd done a, I'd done a, a podcast that went viral. And I was contacted by a guy that runs a channel that um, basically focuses on espionage. Excuse me. So this fucking thing, the carbonation. So he he comes in. So older. he so he con- he contacts me, <laughs> and he says, "Look, I'd like to have you on your cha- on my channel. We have a discussion." And he says, "Look, I have a bunch of guys, FBI agents, CIA agents, uh, KGB agents." And I went, "You know, okay, you know a CIA agent." And he goes, yeah. All right. He goes, I know three of them. I go, I want to talk to one. So I said, put me together with them. You can interview me for the channel. So I I contact the guy. We have several discussions. I send him the book. He comes back. You know what I'm thinking he's going to say? This is ridiculous. Bro, come on. I, I, I can't have my name associated with this fucking insanity. This is crazy. You know what he said? This guy's a fucking genius. He said, this guy is amazing. He said, you realize what he was doing? He was doing this 10 years before. He starts telling me stuff. It, we, I didn't have him read the book. I had him read this synopsis. Mm-hmm. So he, it's amazing. He's like, literally, you understand what he was doing? He was doing this, and this company was doing this. This he's, And so he starts telling me that basically he, he literally only has one or two things that he says. I don't believe that it didn't happen. I think that why it happened is not the reason that Amadeo thinks it happened. Like Amadeo thinks this is why this happened. He's like, I don't think so. I think he's just paranoid, and that was just somebody doing this, and that just happens all the time. It had nothing to do with this. Right. So, other than one or two of those, he's basically saying, I can absolutely see him buying fuck buying these planes. You can do that. There's not a problem with that. And absolutely, that one of the places you would keep those planes is here. He's like, and listen, that's not the only thing. This company, you know, these countries do this. These countries do this. This is not odd. He's like, this is not insane. He's this hap- these kinds of things happen. So he mm. starts dissecting the book and telling me it's all 100% possible. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. So anyway, Kashasha comes in. Amadeo says, I will back you. So they sent, Kashasha goes to the DRC. He starts running for president. He's like number 30 in the polls. They got like 35 guys running. He's like number 30. You know, you would think he doesn't have a prayer. Frank sends team a team over. They hire a bunch of South African uh, mercenaries, <laughs> a bunch more, a couple dozen more from uh, uh, Nigeria. Mm-hmm. He's got guys watching Kashasha at the hotel. He's got an, another team at a at another location. What ends up happening is Frank's guys um, end up getting basically they're they're running Kashasha's plan they're dumping millions of dollars into his campaign so they're running i'm sorry they're running kashasha's uh his his to get elected to his campaign okay so so dumping millions he goes from number 30 down to number three okay over the course of a a month or so okay there's that much money being dumped in people now he's everywhere so the powerhouse that frank is gets him from 30 at the time to number three and Less than two months. Absolutely. Okay. And and keep in mind the guy that's running his the guy that's running his um his private security mm-hmm. is a former is, is a retired Secret Service agent named Kevin Billings. Kevin Billings is I mean he's he's running a, a security security company right now. Really? He he used to guard Kevin Billings was on George H. Bush's presidential um protection detail. And that's who he was dealing with. That's the man running his campaign. Right, running his campaign. And the guy also uh, well, the, uh, running his security company. The guy running, helping to run the campaign is like the one an ex police chief in Orlando named Ke- named um uh his last uh, Joe Robinson. He also worked for M- Mayor Buddy Dyer and helped run May- Mayor Buddy Dyer's campaign Jesus. in Orlando. So these are not. These are big These are hitters. heavy hitters. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Thank so now you. he's at three. Now, now, now he's at three. He's he basically he's going to win the election. Okay. Well, the guy in the number two spot who thinks he's going to win the election realizes he can't win the election. So what does he do? He also happens to be a general. This is like General Schwarzkopf, right? Running for president. That would never happen in the United States. But this is the DRC. This is the kind of thing that happens. So he's whacked out. So it's between one and three right now. Right. Well, well, no, the general. No, the, well, the you're general, saying that the two isn't going to win. 
No, he thinks he's going to win. The number two thinks he will win unless this guy wins. Okay. So I got to get rid of this guy. He's thinking, I can beat you, but I don't think I can beat the Harvard-educated doctor from the U.S. Because okay. I'm a thug. I'm just some thug general in the DRC gotcha. with child with child soldiers. You gotcha. know? Yeah. Look, Listen, the guy Bemba, he ends up getting... He ends up getting like twenty, ten or twenty years for, um, uh, for like rape and murder of other of citizens on war on campaigns. I mean, this is a brutal guy. Yeah. So he comes in and he has his guys arrest thirty two of Frank's, um, of Frank's guys, and they say it's a it's a coup, it's a political coup that they're trying to take over the country. You know, you know, through the political process, but it's still a polit- like a political coup. They're doing it by dumping tons of money. They think it's a CIA operation. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and it's funny because a CIA agent guy told me he said, it sounds like a CIA. Operation. Well, really, they were just <laughs> trying to take Frank's just, guy out. He's just trying. Frank's Frank, yeah. Works. They're trying to get Frank's guy out. Yeah, Frank's right. trying to say, hey, if he becomes president, basically, Frank's do they get him out? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. No, they grab Frank's guys. They they kid. They basically kidnap them they arrest them they hold them for nine days u.s state department and frank put so much pressure on them that they that they they eventually let them go frank's actually got helicopters he hires a black ops team to go in and rescue them like they're waiting with with that, that's power right there. oh yeah they're, you can get the black ops to go in there boy. he's ready to go in and look and here's the thing like when he told me the whole thing yeah. and explains like they were they were located here they were about to go in they're going to go into a military base and rescue these guys this was that's what's about to happen when they finally because you understand they're dragging these guys out every couple of days and sticking like they're going to execute them. Yeah, this is all over. Listen, this is all over. There's a documentary called Nine Days of the Congo about this. Yeah. It, there's articles about it, everything. So that was easy to, to to document. Right. But here's the thing, is that so, so the black ops go in right now, and the CIA agent that I interviewed, yeah. he's telling me, oh, absolutely, that's. I, I go, is there really companies you can hire that? He goes, oh yeah. Yeah, he starts naming off. He goes, wow. "Yeah, they're here. They're located here." You, he goes, "In Africa." He goes, hey, yeah. "Your head's got to be going." Like oh, this. I'm thinking this is insane. Yeah. So, anyway, they he gets these guys released. Frank's guy doesn't end up winning. He actually goes and negotiates. You said Frank's guy doesn't, doesn't does win. not end up winning. Okay, no, because they come in, they grab his guy. I mean, at this point, it's like, what? Do you, and they, keep in mind, this is only a couple of days before the election. Like, this, yeah, the election's within a week or two. Okay. You've just been devastated. Yeah. So he ends up, I think his guy takes third or fourth, something like that. Yeah. Takes like third. So he could have won. Right. Uh, the point is, is at the same time this is happening, Frank's approached by um, by an associate of an oligarch in a Russian oligarch um, to, to um, pull off a coup in Tajikistan mm-hmm. because it hits the papers. And this is now something that they realize – you're the kind of guy whose soldiers will go in and take over a country. We want you to take – we're going to pay you to take over Tajikistan because we have an issue with Putin, and we put a bunch of of uh, gas pipelines down, and Putin is now – there's a whole – it's, it's, now, it's a little he, complicated. Now, did he have any type of relationship with Putin? No. 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 But okay. he does agree to do this, that, to do he, – like he literally has his guys at the border ready to go in. In the, but while that's happening and he's putting that together, he he ends up – that's when he ends up – like Bush calls him to the White House. He meets with Bush. I got the pictures and everything. He He's he's meeting with senators. He's running uh, – he's, he's, he's donating money to campaigns. And at this time, he's got no heat on him legally. No, but – you know, it's, it's I, the, the CIA guy told me that by this point, the CIA has to really be looking at this guy. Right. And he goes, not necessarily – even to stop him because just to see what the fuck what's he's going doing. on. He's got black ops going. This yeah, he's, he's trying to take over countries. He's yeah. getting arrested. There's all these articles. We need to look into this. Something's up. He's trying to buy planes. Yeah. Um, he was trying to buy the bank. He was trying to take over the bank of uh, it was the uh, the Bank of Africa or then the Bank of the Congo or something. Yeah. Like it, the National Bank. I forget how that what that name is. But basically, they're trying. He's negotiating to take over this bank. So he owns the bank that basically runs Africa. So now, how does it come to the point where he is getting heat and it comes to an end? That's the uh, the Riga summit in in uh, in uh, Latvia, in, in the NATO summit. And that was the beginning of the end. Right. So he ends up backing the NATO summit. 
He, he, I mean, he's one of the sponsors backing. He's one of the sponsors like Chrysler, and there's all these big companies that sponsor it. And Frank's one of Frank's companies, which is uh, Acme, they end up sponsoring it. So when Huge Frank, at the time. Right, so when Frank is there uh, in Latvia, he goes to a cocktail party. In the cocktail party, he ends up having a manic, a manic moment oh, Christ. where he does the whole, ah, he starts yelling, and, and he goes a little bit crazy. And he, because so, somebody ends up asking, he, he told me, he said, someone asked me, one of the NATO officials said, what, what, what happened in the Congo? And he says, they were, what are you trying to do? And he, he says, well, I was trying to take over the Congo. I'm trying to do this. I want to get to the mineral rights. I want this. I want that. And they're like, to what end? He's like, well, once it was, I was in the Congo, obviously I would then go into Nigeria and then I would go into, he said, eventually I'd take over the whole thing. He said, he, they go, what's your goal? And he goes, my goal is to build the largest private military in history. Ooh. He goes, and take over every continent on the, on the planet. He said, he goes, and then we won't need NATO anymore. I would think that would probably bring some heat. You know, so what happens yeah. is the CIA guy I talked to, he said, look, that obviously would have generated a Interest. report. Yeah. A report. He goes, that most yeah. likely went to the White House. Mm -hmm. He said, did it go to Bush? I doubt it. Probably went to his chief of staff, may have gone to. So he starts telling me how it would go. Yeah. According to Frank and Woody, that I talked to Woody, yeah. Woody said, look, Frank— because once again, I'm not sure that I don't know what Frank what Frank's thinking. Mm -hmm. Woody Does anybody? <laughs> Woody tells me that Frank. So basically, Frank gets on his plane. By the time Frank lands, within a day or two, they're serving subpoenas. Frank says he thinks Bush is setting him up. They're coming for me because they they're trying to stop me from being a world power or from being a world leader. They you know, and, and Woody said, oh, he was going crazy. He goes, and we told him that's crazy. That's not true. It's just a coincidence. And he's like, no, they're, they're framing me. They're trying to take they're they're, they're 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 trying to stop me. And he's like and Woody's like, you know, and we told him that was crazy. That was crazy. Me and Marty, the Marty Flynn's another guy that mm -hmm. I, um, that uh, we're going to uh, get to the documents. But what was the actual <laughs> subpoena for? for oh, well, that? For, here's the whole thing. What was the subpoena? What were the subpoenas for? They were extremely vague. Oh. It was just like it was a fishing ex expedition. There was nothing specific. They didn't really know what was going on. So would you say they were kind of throwing First mud we, at the wall and well, seeing what would stick type of shit? Initially, you know what they said? Because some companies were in bankruptcy. They yeah. started saying, oh, um, you're hiding money in a bankruptcy. But I'm not. So that was X'd off. Right. So then they throw another, then, another shit against they, the wall. So let me tell you how... They don't know what's going on. You know how you know they don't? Because he ran the company for like a year and a half. Yeah. They investigated for about a year and a half, two years. And eventually they come to him and they say, you're not paying the IRS. You've been withholding money. And and that's the thing I forgot we forgot to touch on. Well, this One is of what the he ways, gets pinched This is for. what he gets pinched for. One of the ways that he's funding this campaign is when these companies go into bankruptcy – he, he withholds money that goes to the IRS because he says, and legally this is true, they're just a debtor. I don't have to give you every penny. I have to maintain, pay my employees, and I'm supposed to quarterly pay over to the IRS, and I have to report every day what I owe them, and I pay over quarterly. And if I cannot pay, I simply have to notify them. If the law says if the IRS wants their money separated from other creditors, they have to file a form and, and have it served on them. The IRS never once did it. That's what the law says. So until you file that form, you're just another debtor. And if I go into bankruptcy, it's too late for you to say, no, we got to get paid first. It's too late. And he took the money that he didn't pay the IRS to fund his He's, goal he, to, to take buy, over the world. To try and buy planes, to buy these other companies, the, the satellite company, the, 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 all, to fund this guy's campaign in, in the Congo. Yeah, yeah, we're going to show all the documents. So now, now I, right. I, uh, Brandon wanted me to ask you a question. You know, the guy who hit the 300K. Right, on, right, on right, the right, internet, right. Because he got the book. He got it for him and his girl and his father. Okay. They all love it, right? You got three cells in nice. that one. Um, and they all they all asked. They said, "How long did it take him to write this book?" Me? Yeah. Well, I wrote. And now I'm looking at it, and and they're gonna see another video with all this shit that you got. I mean, it's just massive. So from beginning to end, how long did it take to to okay. complete the book? It's two different phases. So one, it took about two months, maybe three months, about two months in prison to write the synopsis. The synopsis 
is really two parts. It's a it's a, it's a the main story and then there's a backstory. The combination mm. of those two was thirty thousand words. It basically it's about let's say thirty pages. So it's not huge. It's a it could be a book on its own, really thirty. Because if you did it up, it would probably be sixty pages, mm. 60, 80 pages by itself. So let's say it took me two months to write the synopsis, which is essentially let's, let's say an extremely well written outline. It's, it's its own story. Outline summary. Summary, right? Yeah, right. Well, when I got home, it then took me about three months to turn that into this book, which is – how much is this book? Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The synopsis was only uh, 16,000 words. I, I misspoke. Synopsis is 16,000, 17,000 words. The book is like 45,000, 46,000 words. Mm-hmm. So it's about three times as, as large. So it took me two months in prison, and it took me three months to convert it into an actual into this actual book, which isn't that long. It's hundred. Is it one hundred sixty pages? That, that's that's completely insane. Now, are you incorporating the time you put in to get all the documents? Oh no 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 no, 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 that, no that that that's no. what that's what we're all oh, no. we're all asking. No, because and I had to order the Freedom of Information. That took months. I mean, I and I was I'm saying lucky. from beginning to end, like all these documents that you have to back what you're putting in the book. How long maybe, did it take to maybe make this? Maybe a year. That, that's still amazing. I, I mean, don't care if you were in jail or not. That's amazing. Because actually, it's even more amazing that you did it in jail. Well, I was lucky because Amadeo had a lot of his own documents. He's okay. fighting those case. It's always easier. Like it always, it's always easier when the guys are fighting their cases. They have a ton of the documents. I've written a lot of stories for guys that they got nothing. They don't have their indictment. They don't have a one piece of paper that even says. And that's a real pain, right? Yeah, I'm starting from scratch. Yeah. T- typically, so, what happens in those cases, I'm ordering Freedom of Information Act and public records and everything else. Yeah. While I'm working on somebody else's story, because I know yours is going to be six months of documents coming in, so we're, I'm stockpiling those when I get them all together. Then I'll you'll go to back you. to right. that. Okay. All right. So it was a long time. It was it was it was it was a little here, a little there. Look, not a, you want to know why it's not a huge book? Look, it could easily be a 600 800 page book. It could. Let me tell you why. Because simple the simplest form of this story is the best form of this story. Agreed. It's too complicated. If I got into why this wasn't illegal and why the government- It would just get too boring. It's boring. You want to keep the hype up. And you did. At 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 160 pages, you can't put the fucker down. No, you can't. Because it's nothing but, it's nothing but hype, or or you know, it's nothing but just like the highlights, 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 highlights. Since you've been down here and kind enough to to come to the podcast here or YouTube channel, Three people have told you that they couldn't put the book down. Yeah, that yeah, that that's, everybody that reads it. Yeah, you can't. It's insane look, because, look, because the, it, it's like a, it's almost maybe this is a bad comparison, but it's like a uh, an action movie that is constant action, and you don't want to get up to go get the drink, right? Or you don't you don't even want to pause it to or go take a leak because you don't want to miss something. It, it, it's kind of like that when you start to get into it, especially when you. Except that this isn't bullshit. Right. Well, what's you know what's what's, what's that's funny? what fucks you up. You know what's great about it? What's funny about it is, like you said, you read about half the book, and you're kind of thinking, okay, so he's kind of kooky and he does kooky things and he says kooky things. He wants to take over the world and ah ha ha. That's that's cute. And then when the shit starts happening, and he's making moves, and you start going, well, wait a minute. No, he's not gonna do that. What, what got me? I'll tell you the part that got me I, I, as the reader. It's kooky and it's like funny, kind of, and you're like, "What the hell?" And then when then when the word F sixteen comes in, then you're like, "Whoa!" Th- and, th- and look, th- this guy's for real. If he had told and me it, that, it could have be bullshit. But when you start seeing the pictures, and I talked yeah. to two or three other guys, I remember when you were in development of the book, and you and you were you know speaking of him, and you were saying Bush, he was with Bush, and I'm you know I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I see a picture with Bush, and I was like. Holy shit! You know this, this, Wait, this yeah. shit is for. That's what set me off. And then when I read the final book, I tried to take out of my mind that I had, you know, known a little bit about it. And once you get to that F sixteen part, for me at least, as, as a guy, right? That's when I was like, Jesus. Well, you know, what's great is it's great when you watch the documentary. The doc- the blah, blah, blah. the documentary is on my channel, and my channel is uh, it's Matt Cox and. Inside True Crime. You have the documentary it's, it's on, on there? It's on YouTube. It's called Nine Days in the Congo. Mm-hmm. And if you if you watch it, what's great is like if you read the book and then you watch the documentary, 
Like if you watch the documentary, you you already think, okay, he's a he is a little megalomaniac. Yeah. Keep in mind, he's like five foot four. But you put the two together. But it's when a you banger. read the book and you watch the documentary and you get to see him, you realize, oh wow, this is nuts. Yeah, I can see it now. I the stuff he's saying and the way you're like. Now I can. This is insane. So go buy the book. It's on Amazon. Yeah, you have it with Amazon. Kindle, and you have the paperback. Right. Well, um, wait, here's wait. Let me one more thing. You do the twenty two years. You, oh, you do understand. Yeah. You do understand that when they finally come in. When they finally come in, the government comes in, and he won't accept a plea. He won't take a plea. He's like, <laughs> no, I'm going to trial. <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. So he's not gonna. He's not gonna take a plea. Right. So what they do is they come in, they go to his lawyer. He's paid his lawyer a million dollars, by the way. His lawyer then says, okay, the problem is, Frank, the million dollars doesn't cover a trial. You have to take a plea. So I paid you a million dollars to plea me out. Who would do that? Right. So he's saying that wasn't our agreement. That's for the trial. Mm -hmm. And so the he's saying no. So they're arguing about this. The government comes in and they say the money that he gave you, that million dollars, we're going to move to have the government seize the million dollars from you. If from you, his lawyer. From his lawyer if you don't convince him to plead Gee, guilty. How dirty is that? They also say they're going to uh, – they tell Frank – Is that documented? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, what do you mean no – Oh, no, it's in the transcripts. They actually have a conversation where they're talking about taking it. How can they get away with that? How can they? Bro, if I told you That's half, pretty extreme. half the shit that, I, that I've seen. So wow. the other thing is this that, that they do. Um, they also, of course, and you've heard this before. I know you've talked to these guys and you've talked to enough of mm -hmm. these guys. They, they threaten to, oh, we're going to indict your wife. Yeah, we're gonna indict like other people that he's saying weren't involved in anything. First of all, he's saying it's not illegal. Yeah, they come on down with the hammer to force you, to... and then you end up pleading just to protect right. loved ones or whatever so it may be. So he pleads. He says, "Look, if I can go in front, well, first what they do, they say, look, here's what we're gonna do. So they they, they tell his lawyer that we're gonna take the million dollars. So he goes, lawyer goes, and he's strong, trying to strong arm him into taking the plea. Then the lawyer, he won't do it. Then the lawyer." And the U.S. attorney go to the government. I mean, go to sorry, go to the court, and they say he's incompetent. He's mentally incompetent. We want to have him moved to a psychiatric hospital for two weeks for evaluation, and and to determine if he's competent to stand trial. So the court has him placed in a mental hospital where he's evaluated, placed on all. Once again, transcript. You saw you saw yeah, how yeah. the stuff yeah. they put him on. They yeah. put, I mean, basically they just drug him up. Yeah, so bad. I was basically a walking zombie. He's which which he's even, in the next one. I'm going to put up the document, and you know I know chemicals. Yeah, and you. I mean, th th this is it's basically. Been, uh, I don't even know what it is, but it's so much crap. It's zombie in a pill. He said when he went to his plea. Uh, he probably didn't even he, know his name. He said his, he said drool was running out of yeah. his out of his mouth. He said yeah. I could barely talk. So. They put him on this, and they convince him to take a plea. He's probably only going to get a couple of years. He might get probation, like a whole thing, right? He's so drugged up. They said, but we're going to let you talk to the judge for however many days it takes to explain to him that it was a misunderstanding and this and that. And he's like, okay, because he's going to explain. He's all drugged up. They get him to, to take the plea. He goes in front. He pleads guilty. He's thinking he's going to get a few years at most. The judge gives him 22 years, 22 and a half years. And when he – and base, so basically they get him whacked out on drugs so they that he can't him. think so that he pleads, they and then they rock him. Right. They pump him full of drugs. They send him to Coleman. Sick. They keep him on the drugs for about a year. So by the time he finally convinces them to take him off the drugs and he's – he's Coming out of it. Yeah, he's coming out of it, and, he, and he's, he's, he's cognitive of what's happened. He, he goes to – to file hit to file a uh, what's called a twenty two fifty five to say hey look this is bullshit I didn't realize what I was doing I was my 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 lawyer was was in, uh, ineffective he was he was conflicted based on on them trying to take the money I have transcripts everything they say yeah yeah we understand but you only had one year to file this and it's a little bit over a year and they kept him on the drugs and for they that kept year. him on the drug for the Dirt, years that's so dirty um the, now the the other question that uh, I have is. He got out early for medical now, right? Yeah, he got himself he got himself 10 years Monster. house arrest. I've never heard of that in my life. Yeah. 
Well, the whole time he's in prison, too, he's fighting people's cases. Yeah. Oh, the other thing is, by the way, you know, the government. So the government gets the court to um, to rule that he's he's uh, uh, that he is uh, mentally in, in, incompetent and cannot sign a plea agreement. He can, or, I'm sorry. They basically they give him they make him a ward. They give him a guardian. So as a guardian, you're now like a ward of the guardian, a ward of the state, and this is your guardian. He makes all decisions. You can't write a check. You cannot drive a car. You cannot have a job. You can't do anything. You can't enter into a contract. You cannot do anything. So they, so the court rules he is a, he, he is a, um, a ward of the state. He is incompetent, and we're giving you a guardian. But yet, but yet you're capable of making the decision to plea. Right. They never tell the guardian. That contradicts the No, you understand? They never tell the guardian. Right. You know I have a guardian. Yeah. You know I can't make this decision. You know I'm in, I'm incompetent. You then go and have me plead. You have my lawyer ple- have me plead guilty, sign this. You then have me sentenced. You never tell my guardian. Do you know when his guardian found out that, that all of this had happened? He called him from Coleman. After, after yeah, yeah, months and months after. And he says... Hey, I'm at Coleman. I'm in prison. I'm this and that. And the guy's like, "Okay, well, Frank, when are you going to go to trial? You know, just let me know when you go to trial." And he's like, "Wait, I pled guilty. They gave me 22 years. I'm in prison." He never even knew it was happening. So now, now he's out on house arrest. Do you still think he has a plan to take over the world, or do you think he got over that? I mean, look, he he. No, he's never going to get over it. But I mean, do you do you still think he's going to absolutely be active in that mission? Absolutely. When, when I was in prison with him, and I said, Frank, you know. I said, Frank, I said, you know, listen, if you serve all your time, you're going to be like 70 years old when you get out. You're probably not going to have time to take over the world. I'm kind of joking with him. And he goes, immediately, I said, you're probably not going to have time to take over the world. He looks at me and he goes, Moses started when he was 90. So in other words, yes, he he, he probably is plotting and planning right it, now. It, it, it's to never. It. And I used to say, well, you know, well, when, the, you know, I used to always talk like, you know, well, when you thought this or when he goes, you keep saying it. Like it's not gonna happen. Yeah, I remember him saying this one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's like he goes, "I will be emperor," and I was just like, "Well, that answers that question." So as you say, listen, thinking about it. Yeah. So goosebumps. So the answer to the he's amazing. Right. So in closing, the answer to the final question is that he's out on house arrest and he's ninety nine point nine percent probably. Oh, I'm sure he's or he is plotting and planning on how he's gonna finish his goal off. So you get it on Amazon. You got Kindle. You got the paperback. Uh, it's a great book. It's a great book. It's a great book. It, it really is a great book. And uh, this is just a rundown. We're gonna have another one with the actual documents. Yeah, we'll, sh- we'll go- let's just go over document by you know. Yeah. And you could even break that and break that up and whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I think this is great. And and I mean, get and the I'm book. sorry I talked so long. And I'm, I know I'm boring. I drag it out, but I'm a talker. No, no, no. We we stayed in line, and it, we, I think this is really good. I mean, it, it's a really good book. I wouldn't do it. I'm not really like a book reader. I'm more of a visual type no. person. Yeah, but it, it, it's good, and I, I recommend it. And you know, even if you. you it's good. Yeah, it's good. Get it on Amazon, Amazon Look, Kindle. Go to you can go Amazon to my paper book, and you could go to my website. I'm sorry, my website. Well, you go to the website, you can see pictures. Yeah. I got pictures of Amadeo. I got pictures. And what's of, the website? Uh, the website is called uh, it's called InsideTrueCrime.com. InsideTrueCrime.com. Yeah, you can and, put in the link. And the documentary is on your YouTube. channel. On my YouTube channel, there's and a documentary. The, and the name of the documentary is. Nine days in the Congo. Nine days in the Congo. Buy the book. Awesome. Watch Nine Days in the Condo. Condo. Congo. Congo. Put them together. You'll love it. Yeah. Make sure you watch the next one with all the documents. So I would recommend this. I'd recommend you buy the book. You watch the documentary on your YouTube channel, and watch all the paperwork. So then it all goes together, and and you're, subscribe. And, and subscribe. Hit the bell and subscribe. Subscribe to Matt. Yeah. What's your YouTube channel again? Matt Cox and Inside True Crime. So that's two different ones. Yeah. If you put in Matt Cox, it's going to come yeah, up. You he's put inside, he's, like, yeah. he's a celebrity of YouTube. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm, my girlfriend said, her kid said, I'm YouTube famous. Okay. You, so, <laughs> so Mr. YouTube Famous, subscribe to that's both funny. of his channels. Uh, please subscribe to MSCS Media and hit the bell so when new stuff comes out, you get the bell. Thanks a lot, Matt.